Hi guys, this is Larry Feldman with a lesson on writing pseudocode to implement the quadratic formula. In another lesson, I derived the quadratic formula, and I'm not going to go into any depth in this video as to why the quadratic formula is the way it is. I simply want to write the pseudocode to implement the quadratic formula that you see on the screen. Now, the first step when writing pseudocode is to have the word start. So all pseudocode will begin with the word start. The next thing we need to do is input our variables a, b, and c. Because without them, we can't calculate x. The next step is to make sure that a is not 0. Looking at this formula, if a is 0, we get an undefined result because you cannot divide by 0. So if, if a is 0, we're going to let the user know that there's a problem. Output, we're going to output to the screen coefficient a cannot be 0. And then the program is done. So we're, go we're going to write the word end. And that leads me to another major point, which is that although there is exactly one occurrence of the word start, you must have at least one occurrence of the word end. And oftentimes you will have end more than once. So we are going to end the program uh, at this stage because we can't continue if a is 0. And another important point is that whenever you have an if statement, there must be an end if statement. This is called a block. The if is the beginning of the block, and the end if is the end of the block. And notice the use of indentation to make the pseudocode more readable. Now, this piece, b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant. And it's so important that I want to create a separate holder for it. So we'll say discriminant. Actually, I'm going to abbreviate it as disk. The discriminant equals b squared minus 4ac. And I want to do that just to um, make the pseudocode a little bit more readable. At this stage, um, we have a choice to make. Let's come back up here for a second. If the discriminant is positive, we're taking the square root of a positive number, which is completely legitimate. If the discriminant is 0, you're taking the square root of 0, which is 0. That's also legitimate. But if the discriminant is negative, you're taking the square root of a negative number, which is not allowed in the real number system. And you could have what's called an imaginary solution, but that's beyond the scope of, of this video. So we're not going to be looking at imaginary solutions. So once we find out what the discriminant is, we're going to test it. If the discriminant is greater than or equal to 0, we are going to have uh, two answers. Answer 1 is the opposite of b plus the square root of the discriminant all divided by 2a and notice the use of sqrt for uh, square root and I will just copy and paste this answer 2 is the opposite of b minus the square root of the discriminant all over 2a notice that uh, this line is simply um, this equation, but it's the positive portion of, of this sign right here. This is plus or minus. That means that there could be two solutions. Answer 1 deals with the positive sign. Answer 2 deals with the negative sign. Uh, also notice that if the discriminant is 0, Answer 1 and answer 2 will be exactly the same. In other words, answer 1 will be the opposite of b plus 0 over 2a, 
and answer 2 will be the opposite of b minus 0 over 2a. Those are identical, but that's completely fine. Now, um, now what we're going to do is we're going to output to the to the user answer 1 and answer 2. And then we will end if. Okay, so now we have a block here. If the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero, we compute both answers. They may be the same, may, they may not be the same, and we output the answers. And we can actually end the program here as well. And again, we have, it, we have an end if to denote the beginning and end of the block. If we get this far, if we get this far without ending, we know the discriminant is negative. That means that we can output to the user no real solutions. And we can end the program again. So let, let's take a look at this. And um, we'll go over a few cases. So let's, let's assume that the discriminant is positive. We hit, we go to start, we input A, B, and C. If a equals 0, we output that the coefficient cannot be 0, and we end, and we're done. But let's assume that a is not 0. So we hit this end if, then we calculate the discriminant, and if the discriminant is greater than or equal to 0, we're here we're assuming that the discriminant is positive, so this statement, discriminant is greater than or equal to 0, is true, so we come into this block, we calculate two answers, we output them, and we end. And then we're done again. Let's go back to the beginning and assume that the discriminant is zero. We start, we input a, b, c. Uh, if a equals zero, let's assume that it's not zero. So we'll, we will not go into this block. We'll hit the end if, we'll calculate the discriminant, which is zero. Then we get to if the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero. We're, well, here it's zero, so we, we come inside the block. We calculate answer one and answer two, which are going to be the same in this case. We output them to the user, and then we end. The last case, we start, we input A, B, C. We, again, assume that A is non-zero, so we, we, don't, we don't go into this block. We come down calculate the, the discriminant, which is negative in this case. Then we get to this if statement. If the discriminant is positive or zero, we're supposed to fall in, in here. However, we made the assumption in this example that the discriminant is negative. So we don't execute this highlighted block. We hit the end if, excuse me, we, we hit the end if, and then we output no real solutions. So that's it for now. Uh, I hope that makes sense. If not, um, please uh, email me or, or leave me some comments, and I will see you next time. Thanks.